welcome to getting started with Ideas Data Architect. I'm going to start by creating a new empty file. You can see that we now have different panes on the screen. On the left is the model object tree pane where you will see your logical and physical models line up. We also have a data dictionary tab which is the collection of objects that are shared across all the models in this project file. The data lineage tab is where you'll be able to document your data flows and your data transformations using an easy to use interface. We also have the macro tab and the macros that you see here under the sample macros folder come with the product right out of the box. These macros are written in a version of basic called WinRap basic. The help for it is up under the question mark. Switching back to the data model, you can see on the right hand side is the model object canvas. This is where you'll see the graphical representation of your ER diagrams and their elements. Now let's have an overview of the visual data modeling capabilities within Data Architect. You can see I've created three entities. Double clicking on any object brings up that object's editor and here I will add an attribute. We'll call it ID and I will add that to the primary key of this entity. Say OK and you can see that ID is now part of Entity 1. If I want to design a relationship between Entity 1 and Entity 2, I can do that by using the relationships function on the ribbon bar. In this case, I'll make an identifying relationship. Click on Entity 1 and 2, and you will see that the ID attribute has been propagated to Entity 2 as a foreign key. You could carry on this process, including adding more attributes to develop a model from scratch. Next, I will perform a reverse engineering process. This is perhaps the fastest way to have an ER diagram for your existing databases. You'll see here I'm going to do a File New. Under File New, you have the ability to create a new blank relational or dimensional model. We can do a reverse engineer against an existing database, or we can import a model from a variety of existing formats, including our external metadata bridges, which allow Data Architect to bring in metadata assets from sources that might not be your typical database management system. I'll start with a reverse engineer. I'm going to hit the login button. You'll see that it's brought up the reverse engineer wizard. I have multiple ways to connect. Under native or direct connection, you'll see we have a few options for different platforms. If you want to connect to a database that's not in this list, you could try connecting to it with ODBC. Clicking the setup button brings up the ODBC 64-bit ODBC applet. Here you can create a user or a system DSN, also known as a data source name, for the platform that you would like to reverse engineer. In this case, I am going to use a native or direct connection to my SQL Server, and I'm going to put in my credentials. There is a variety of authentication methods. In this case, I will use SQL Server authentication. I'll hit the Next button. You see that it has contacted that data source, and here I'm able to use the ellipsis to select the database I'd like to reverse engineer. I can also select the owner or schema I'm interested in bringing back. In this case, I'll just use DBO. Over here, you see the ability to bring back different objects. You'll see some are lit up and available to be selected, and others are shaded and not able to be selected. This is largely dependent on your platform selection and what is available on that particular platform to be brought back. In this case, I'll just get user tables for us today. I'm going to go ahead and hit Finish. You'll see that Data Architect is going out to reverse engineer this particular SQL Server database. And as I close the dialog window, you see that we have both a logical and a physical model for this particular database. Under the diagram selection, you could choose a layout that might be better suited to this particular schema. In this case, I'm going to choose orthogonal. And if I go to the physical model, I'll choose orthogonal as well. As of this time, you can see that the logical model and the physical model are very similar. One thing that separates Data Architect from its competition is the fact that Data Architect holds the logical model to be platform agnostic. That means that with Data Architect, you can have a physical model for a variety of platforms that are all tied to the same logical platform agnostic model. Additionally, the logical model is used as the vehicle where architects and modelers add their definitions, description, and documentation to really flesh out this project to make it meaningful business information to your enterprise. So let's start that journey. I'm going to go to the data dictionary and I'm going to work with naming standards templates. 
I'm going to select new naming standards template and I'm going to import one that I happen to have ready for us. What these naming standard template do, and you can have as many of them as you need for your particular implementation, they provide a way at both the logical and physical layers to have a case statement, a prefix, and a suffix for their associated object types. Under the mapping tab is really where uh, the lexicon is, provides that lexicon between the shortened physical abbreviation and something that is much more palatable at a business level. I'm going to go ahead and say OK and you will see that now that template has been attached to my local data dictionary. Data security information is another object that's resident in your local data dictionary and Data Architect has the ability to help generate default security information categories. You can see that compliance mapping and data security classification come with the tool right out of the box. Let's work with security impact. I'm going to do a right click on that, hit edit security property, and you can see that under the name tab we have some uh, text and a, and a description for you and some values uh, already provided. These lists function just like a spreadsheet and you can click in any cell to add new values. In this case, we're going to select moderate as our default and we're going to bind that to our entities at the logical level. Now back on our logical model, the next thing I will do is run the naming standards utility. The naming standards utility applies a template to your model. Under the options on the drag down, you'll be able to see the templates that now are now available. In this case, the template you saw me add earlier in this video. I'm going to select that particular template and go from the physical to logical as my target. On my output, I'm going to select my logical entities and attributes by hitting the select all at the top. I'm going to click the run translation button to get a quick sanity check on the translations that it will be made and when everything looks good, I'll say OK. You can see the names for the items have now been changed to something that's much more palatable at a business level. Additionally, what I will do is display those data security and data security values by going to my diagram and object display options. I will do a quick control A and a control R to redraw that just so I can see everything that's been done. And now you see for this particular model, we have come a long way from our physical model to adding that valuable business level information and understanding of this particular project. I'm also able at this point to generate new physical models from this logical model. So if I right click on the logical model, select generate physical model, and I will call this Postgres. You see Postgres is selected here. We have many options to choose from. The options you're seeing come with our all platform license. I will go through the dialog and today I'll be taking the standard options through and say finish. You see we now have a Postgres physical model and this physical model now has the characteristics associated with that platform. The next step I could take is to generate the database which would be a right click on the physical model and selecting generate database. I could generate the database in a, in a single DDL file or straight with a database connection for some platforms. Today I will generate a single SQL DDL file. I'll hit next. I'll take the standard options and you can see here the DDL that has been created for this particular implementation. Another feature I'd like to show today is under tools you can generate a report. You can see an HTML or Word RTF report can be created and it will be created in this particular directory that's selected. I can select those options that I want to have appear in my report. In this case, I want to have the entities in the report, and off the entities, I want to have all the entity information. Here I could select an image if I want that to appear in my report. I'll go ahead and select the Postgres physical model image, and I will hit Finish. You can see it's created the HTML report and now I can browse through to see the entities and the other items that I've selected. That will end the video. I hope you've enjoyed getting started with your Studios Data Architect. Thank you very much.